the theta number next to it, which simply is a covariance between the company's stock return and the market return. It reflects the company specific risk. In other words, how much a company's stock is affected by the movements of the market. A beta equal to one means the company has lower systemic, systematic risk than the market because it's going to drop the market risk premium when you multiply with a figure lower than one. Uh, power generation, utilities, financial services can be considered as good examples to low beta sectors. The companies in these sectors are not expected to greatly affected by the movements in the market in general as they provide some kind of necessary goods and services. A beta, on the other hand, greater than one, means the company has a higher systematic risk than the market, because a beta greater than one, will, when we multiply with this figure, it's gonna be greater than the market risk premium itself. Still, construction supplies and entertainment industries are good examples for high beta sectors they indicate a greater risk than the market overall so drives our cost of equity upwards you may be wondering um, what levered beta is uh, we, we already mentioned that we find the company specific risk premium with the beta component so beta has to reflect the capital structure of the target company that is what meant by a levered beta it reflects the company's leverage. The beta is levered with the company's capital structure. I will now explain you um, when you need which one of these betas and how to convert them into each other. For that reason, we are going to move to the next slide I've prepared for you guys here, lecture 98, that calculation on levered and levered beta. So which one to use? Well, if the target company is public, we can get the historical beta directly from Bloomberg. However, which is quite straightforward, just go to Bloomberg, get the historical beta, and this is it will be probably unlevered, uh, levered, so you'll use it. However, if the target company is private, we have to find the beta of publicly listed comparable companies. But these figures, we have to be careful are levered meaning that each reflects the capital structure of the related comparable company in order to get an average figure first we have to calculate the unlevered beta for each company and then get the average of the beta numbers get the average unlevered beta of comparable companies and when we have the average figure, we will convert the unlevered beta, we will lever it using the target's capital structure. So I'm going through once again, I'm going over this once again. If the company is private, we can go and find some comparable companies, its peers, and we get their beta figures. But these beta numbers are levered, they reflect each comparable company's capital structure. So we have to unlever each of these betas first. Then we get the average of unlevered betas of the comparable companies, and we lever that average using the target's capital structure. You can see here uh, the formulas to convert uh, beta figures one to the other. We have the unlevered beta. This is how you find the unlevered beta with the levered beta, and this is how you can find the levered beta when you have the unlevered beta. So it is it is just taking into account the capital structure of the company and the tax effect. Unlevered beta, levered beta. So Starbucks Corporation is a public company. So we have, I'm gonna double click this one. It's here, our beta calculation. We have the historical beta figure. We can get it from a Bloomberg for Starbucks Corporation, which is 0.66. I just plugged this in and linked it here. So it's quite straightforward. However, um, we can uh, use two other alternatives. As I mentioned, we can get the, if the company were, was private, 
if a company were private, I would just go to find out its public peers, get their unlevered betas, levered betas. I would unlever each of the levered beta of the peer companies, get the average, and then lever it with Starbucks Corporation's capital structure. However, we will follow uh, uh, another method here, which is easier to show you guys, which is, I, I think it will make you uh, the illustration better for the conversion of beta. So another alternative is that Damadoran also publishes betas by sector for US companies, for the US market. And it has a source here, the website. So I will go to that source, it's open here. Um, as you can see here, betas by sector, United States. So we need to find this, this is unlevered beta figure. We need to find the industry related, which is, I mentioned here, retail special lines industry. So we will go find retail special lines industry, that's it. Uh, yep, and this is 0.73 unlevered beta for the industry. So we have it, but this is an unlevered number. We have to lever it according to Starbucks capital, fig capital structure. How we do that? We know how to do that. I am just going to go to the levered beta page. So we have the unlevered beta. So this is our formula. We will use this one. We take the unlevered beta here, this one. We first let's if we find the debt or equity, the capital, the debt ratio, the debt ratio of the company, which is market capitalization, the, the, the total debt divided by the market cap here. And we multiply it with one minus the marginal tax rate, the effect of tax. So we are levering it with, with the debt of Starbucks Corporation. And we have to get the tax shield, the tax saving effect. That's why we are multiplying it one minus 35%. And we multiply it with, with the debt over equity ratio and we add one. And then we multiply this figure with the unlevered beta to find the levered beta number. And we have the levered beta for Starbucks. Uh, for the sake of this uh, lecture, I'm going to use this one because it's much straightforward. So, uh, but we learned how to convert unlevered beta to levered beta and vice versa. Mm -hmm.